Lyra's view supports text justification for left, center, and right, along with character styles, bold, italic, underlined, strike, and caps. We support various shape types, including rectangles, round rectangles, and ellipse, and you can see that you can create a multitude of shapes with these three objects, also with polygon support coming shortly. If you enable layer effects, Export Kit will automatically translate those effects. We support drop and inner shadow, stroke, color fill, gradient fill, outer and inner glow. You can also nest layer effects. This will allow you to create multiple designs using the same base layers. Now some environments deal with this better than others, but you can see that we support a lot of different environments. Again, each layer is individually translated its properties to that actual environment, but each environment will actually deal with effects on its own. Um, this is something that you'll have to test just to see if it's suitable for your current needs. Using Images panel, you can export all your layers as your selected image type. Each image type will have its own options that you can customize, but basically once exported you will get all your images within your skins folder, and this will be dependent on your Photoshop file. You can take a quick snapshot at any time to give to a client, as well as add a custom watermark. Now once exported, we can take a look at an actual snapshot with watermark enabled. You can create multiple icon sets and we have a few defaults that you can use or customize and add your own. Once exported, you'll get the generated icons based on the sizes you chose. Guides panel allows you to apply smart guides to your document or your layer. You can actually snap guides to create accurate measurements dependent on your design and again these will work with both your documents and your layers. If you enable columns, you can choose the number of columns that you wish to have generated and this will automatically be done for you. The same can be said for rows. If you enable rows, you can choose a number of rows that you wish to have generated and again this will automatically be done in your Photoshop document. Now this can be applicable to both documents and layers and we can note this in padding. So we're going to add padding to the document and we're also going to add it to the individual layer. This is great for both print and web based documents. Tags view will allow you to add layer tags to your Photoshop layers quickly and easily and this can be done using our drop down menus. Once you've selected the layer tag that you wish to have, respectively it will give you access to a type and arguments of that layer tag. This will allow you to further customize your Photoshop export to your selected environment. Exports view supports multiple environment outputs. Now with each output, what you can do is choose to include your images or not. This can be done by simply selecting the checkbox. With HTML base, you can choose to include your images as CSS. Further customize your export with individual settings for each environment. Now this is dependent on the environment as to what settings are available, but you can do this before it actually exports. There are a variety of layer and output options to further personalize your export. We'll discuss relative positions first. What this will do is give you the difference between stacked layers in your output code and nested layers based on your Photoshop folder content. So whatever folders you have, it'll keep it intact and create containers. If you use dynamic height, what it will do is basically calculate the size of the content rather than the document itself. So you'll see that the output is reflective here of the full document and we'll see that by scrolling. But if we change the actual view or page, you'll see that there is space that is given based on the actual design. But in the output with dynamic height, that space is removed to basically maintain the visual. Layer effects can also be included in the output. And what this will do is apply the layer effects per environment based on your actual Photoshop design. So you'll see some of our support here. This is an actual HTML output from our Photoshop file. You can also create multiple page exports using our page tags. This will be dependent on your folders and the page tags that you have applied. What this will do is in the output, it'll actually generate pages based on your folder structure. And you can note this here where each of the pages is designated from the actual folder content. 
if you enable responsive CSS, and this is HTML and CSS only, what this will do is allow you to create target screen designs. And what this will do is generate those screens in the output. So if we take a look at a responsive web page, for instance, what this will do is create each target size uh, for the actual screen. So this is our desktop, and now we're looking at our tablet view. And if we actually change the screen size again, what it'll do is generate our mobile view. And again, this is done with responsive CSS enabled using our CSS tags. You also have the option of keeping all the PSD assets that are generated from export kit during the export. What this will do is create an asset folder per export and give you access to each individual folder in your Photoshop file. So this is great for easy reference to your content and to update individual content on the fly rather than the entire document. Once you begin the export process, it will begin a layer by layer action of translating each individual layer. Layer types are supported independently, so shapes, images, text, and folders will be translated dependent on the environment that you've selected. All exports are organized into project folders. This is for easy navigation. What you can do with each project is load it into its native environment. And this is dependent upon the environment itself. For HTML based projects, you can drag the files into the browser and load it directly. But for Flash base, you will need to load it into Flash Builder to compile first.